Welcome to part 3. The Sega Saturn is an interesting console that I've already talked about before. I wanted to make an extra addendum that talked about how it fit into the 5th console generation and the console war. The Saturn came in third, selling only 9.26 million units, and due to its discontinuation in 1998, the platform had a library of only 1,028 games. Unsurprisingly, 785 of those are Japanese exclusive, leaving us with only 239 Western Saturn releases. This may be shocking news for some, but the Saturn actually beat the Nintendo 64 in Japan as the Nintendo 64 was just really unpopular there. So hardware-wise, this one is rather complicated. I'll try my best to be as concise as possible. The Saturn had two CPUs, two SH2s running at 37 MIPS per CPU for a total of 74 MIPS. This wasn't enough, so Sega added the SU DSP, a powerful DMA unit that also did tasks similar to the RSP and GTE. It ran at 85.91 MIPS, and the Saturn also had 2 MB of RAM, while the DSP only had 1 KB of RAM. More about this later. It also had two GPUs, the first one handled 3D polygons and 2D sprites, while it only used quadrilaterals and the second GPU could handle 2D and 3D backgrounds, and it could also perform things like draw infinite floors, walls, really cool water and haze effects, and similar, relatively stunning stuff. It also had three banks of 512 kilobytes of VRAM, one for VDP1, one for VDP2, and one for the frame buffer. It also featured a Yamaha YMF-292 sound controller, controlled by Motorola 68EC-000, which had 32 audio channels and FM synthesis, along with 512KB of RAM. It also had a 2x speed CD drive. The Saturn's hardware had some flaws that made working with it very difficult. First of all, the complexity of this console made it a relatively difficult task to program for early on, especially as Sega rushed it to market before the developers knew how to use it properly. Sega also didn't provide proper SDKs and development tools. There were three big issues on the hardware side that kind of screwed the system. The first issue the Saturn had was the way that chords were drawn. You see, there are two ways of drawing textures. To simplify, forward texture mapping checks each pixel on a texture to see what pixels on the screen it belongs to, inverse texture mapping checks each pixel on the screen and looks at which pixel on a texture it belongs to. Everything today uses inverse texture mapping, as forward texture mapping has two massive issues. The first issue is a transparency problem, because we are drawing to the same pixel multiple times. If you draw to it more than once, it just breaks transparency. This is why many Saturn games use this weird checkerboard effect that actually looked quite good on old CRTs, but nowadays it's suboptimal. The second issue is that very large quads would spend time recoloring so many pixels that the game's performance would tank. Basically, it would be cheaper for the system to calculate multiple smaller quads than one big one. The third issue the Saturn had was that it only had one kilobyte of RAM in the SU DSP. Basically, the SU DSP would need to be babysat by the CPU, and because it ran at half the clock rate of the CPUs, it could access RAM at half speed, clogging up the pipeline. The one kilobyte of RAM was just not enough for it, as if programming for it only in assembly wasn't difficult enough. The two smaller issues on the system was the console's lack of 80 PCM compression, meaning the audio would take up more space on the console, and the lack of harder accelerated video decoding, meaning the Saturn would need to process Cinepak video, which isn't ideal, or alternatively, it could use a plug-in MPEG card, but that was an optional add-on. Now, this might seem quite bad, but I've actually made a video on how to fix the system. In short, add 128K of RAM to the SU DSP, change the VDP-1 to inverse texture mapping, add 80 PCM compression to the sound chip, half a megabyte of RAM to VDP-1, and better tools for the developers. Of course, it may be surprising to tell you that even though this system has so many apparent flaws, it's my favorite. It's entirely because of the unique hardware. It was not only rewarding to research, look into, it was also rewarding to see how much could be done with it, even with its flaws. It could provide experiences that 
either of the two consoles would struggle with, and nowhere is that more evident than in the Panzer Dragoon games. While the Saturn did have quite a lot of decent arcade titles, it also had Panzer Dragoon. And more specifically, Panzer Dragoon Saga. This game changed me as a person. Panzer Dragoon Saga taught me about the beauty of desolation. How completely desolate, barren environments could be beautiful or inspiring to look at. It inspired me to actually begin writing things that could turn into future projects. Though, for now, they're just creativity outlets, so don't keep your hopes up. Uh, from narrative games, the Nintendo 64 may have had Zelda, the PS1 may have had Final Fantasy, but Panzer Dragoon Saga is, I feel, one of the most beautiful games of the 90s, and that's not due to some high-end graphical magic, even though the system did push the Saturn to its limits, but because of the careful use of environments, music, effects, and the 90s FMVs to create an unforgettable experience that made me feel things no other 90s game really did. But let's step back for a moment. The Saturn has far more in common with the PlayStation 1 than the Nintendo 64, and as I've already compared them in my Saturn video, it's futile to do it again. The PlayStation was just simpler, and while the peak of what the Saturn could do was higher than what the PS1 could do, Sega dropped it right as the developers were getting comfortable with it, and instead, now we had the Dreamcast. This of course caused Sega to lose consumer trust, and then the Dreamcast didn't sell very well, and then it died as well. At its best, this system could use its more cloudy palette, along with VDP2, to make large, atmospheric worlds that just couldn't be possible in other platforms. And before you ask, it is really difficult to compare triangles and quadrilaterals in terms of graphical capabilities, so I'm not. Just look at how the games look and make your choice for yourself which one you prefer. Overall, I didn't include the Saturn in the console wars debate for a reason. To most people in the West, it was an afterthought, and while many people, including myself, love the unique games that came on this console and this console's architecture spawned, far more people know nothing about them. I've seen people claim that the Nintendo 64 library was quality over quantity, and I'd like to argue that the Saturn would fit this definition far more than the Nintendo 64. While I know it's hard to compare them, I would personally put the Saturn on par with the PS1 in terms of peak game quality, but below in terms of game quantity, of course. I would put it above both consoles in terms of peak graphical capability, as it could pull off some visuals that were simply impossible on either system. But I excluded it for a reason, it just didn't fit in. It was the odd one out, the strange system people could only really hear of and maybe have a glimpse of seeing, but until now, nobody really talked that much about it. More people need to experience the Saturn. It is a wonderful system, full of some games that are really not seen anywhere else, with unique and stunning graphics, especially for the time it came out, even if it wasn't particularly revolutionary in the general sense. Some of the games that came out on the system were a tier above of everything else at the time. I know Final Fantasy VII is seen as the peak 90s JRPG, but I believe Panzer Dragoon Saga is, if maybe not better, completely on par with it. I love the system, and it is kind of weird talking about it in this sort of way, as I normally try to be objective with the PS1, Nintendo 64, the other systems, but with the Saturn, it is difficult. This system is truly home to some of the most beautiful 5th generation games I've ever fucking seen. I really do recommend you try it. My only complaint is that they had to use inverse texture mapping. <laughs>